Okay, it seems like our players are underway. Uh, and it looks like Jesse is going to be on the play, which is just obviously huge in this matchup. And not only is she on the play, she has uh, she has the grief scam. Doesn't have a any other castable spells in hand, but I think that that is this is simply enough to keep on the play, especially in this matchup. One awkward part we see about this hand is, although you have the grief scam, the one lander means that you're sort of all in on this grief, helping you get a ton of early game leverage because right now you know she can play grief. Pitching either Terminate or Dothy Voidwalker and take two cards. But Dingo has a lot of removal in his hand. And the Fury, the Lightning Bolt, and the Terminate mean that there's no clear way for her to disrupt all the removal. So, you know, I might actually give an edge to Dingo based on these opening hands because this hand is exactly what you'd want to see on the draw facing a, uh, a Grief Scam. I, I agree. I think that we may see Jesse take both of the targeted removal spells, the Lightning Bolt and the Terminate, and and cross her fingers, hoping that there's no top deck red card to pitch to Fury. Um, I'm not sure if there's any like extra layer here that we're I'm not seeing, but well, th there is one thing to note. It, with the Bowmasters in hand on on turn two for Dingo, he can ping the Grief and try to double block. So there's this hidden removal spell that he has access to, which means that even with taking the Terminate and Bolt, you're not able to guarantee that this Grief is going to connect past the first two turns. That might yeah, be enough to do it with the terminate in hand, though. That's a great point. I think if Jesse doesn't just rip the land off the top, it kind of has to be a red land. I agree. I think we're going to see Dingo a little bit ahead here. And what do you think of Dothy Voidwalker in the mirror? Do you think that's something that players are like, oh, this is not great early, but can't be good late? Like, what's the role of Dothy in this matchup? Um, Dothy, I think, is overall weaker than than you know you might expect for a card that has like graveyard hate on in a, in a matchup where pe players are flickering their cards constantly it is like it usually trades kind of unfavorably against grief unfavorably against the one mana removal is somewhat easy to play around i think once you untap with dothy voidwalker it can maybe like get extra uses out of scam it can be quite important but it, it, you know one other big problem is that it doesn't play defense very well at all it does play right. defense better in this matchup than it does in any other matchup because it can block opposing void walkers but um overall not a great blocker right and we saw jesse draw that land so finding that blood crypt <laughs> on time was huge for how this game ends up because now with the treasure she already has access to enough mana to cast the fable she drew another blood crypt meaning that she doesn't even have to use the 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 uh the treasure if she wants to cast it and the ragavan doesn't even have to be exposed so with two lands off to the top for the first two drops us for Dingo, it's not the greatest spot to be in. This is sort of a hard turn, though, I think. Like, you have to decide, do I want to just play Fable? Do I want to attack and allow a double block? Or do I want to hope that Dingo, you know, doesn't have any answer to this Fable token and just play it safe? Wow, Dingo doesn't go for the Bowmaster play. Yeah, this is a little surprising for me because when I see this board set, I'm thinking... Well, Dingo really needs time. Even if you do get the chance to pitch the Fury, you might be lower on resources than Jesse. So I'm thinking that this Bowmasters is that avenue to buying time. But maybe he's just thinking if there's a Bowmasters from Jesse's side, it's so bad that I can't do that here. Yeah, I, I agree. That's that, that's likely the, the thought process here. Could be wanting to like draw a red card, evoke the Fury, and then get ahead on board. Here, Dingo might be thinking, well, if I just draw a red card, if I hold my Bowmaster, I can go Evoke Fury and then use the Bowmaster to have five total damage to kill both of Jesse's creatures. Definitely a really, really tough spot. I honestly can't imagine like the library, both libraries cooperating with Jesse any better than they have uh, this game. And, yeah. and yet, Dingo draws a black card instead of a red card. That's a great point. I, I think that the logic was Bowmaster paired up with Fury can allow me to kill both creatures if something comes down, but not casting the Dothy just really hurt then because, you know, Dingo saw the Ragavan and was thinking, I just have to represent Bowmaster, and, and that was enough for Desi to essentially time walk him last turn. Yeah, absolutely. I think that at this point, Dingo is going to be pretty forced to play the Bowmaster. And, but I, I, and, you know, this will stop Jesse from being effectively able to loot with the Fable of the Mirror Breaker, which will keep that Verdant Catacombs stranded in the hand, I imagine. Um, yeah, I don't think there's a great argument for trading the Catacombs for a Bowmaster trigger. I could be, could be wrong about that. Yeah, I mean, 
One thing Dingo did was target the grief with the trigger, which makes it a little more appealing to discard mm. something. But even then, it, it's probably not worth it. We're, we're kind of seeing the advantage of, you know, this grief sticking on the play means that Jesse didn't really have to do anything else proactive. She can kind of maneuver around a lot of Dingo's tricks with the Bowmaster early on. And suddenly, Dingo's at a pretty low life total and doesn't have a lot of draw steps to get out of this. Even if Dingo is to find something like a red card to cast this Fury, it can't kill both the creatures. Yeah, and then we see the, the chump lock from Bowmaster on the Fable token. I imagine that's a nod to the fact that it is very, very difficult to get yourself to one life in this matchup with not dead after all. At Orcish Bowmasters, you're, you are going to be dead eventually. Right. One thing that was sort of rough was last turn with the Bowmaster's trigger, Dingo ended up targeting the Grief, which meant that the token wasn't able to trade off for the Goblin Shaman if the Shaman had been targeted instead. Um, so given the plan was to try to kill the grief, then not double blocking kind of ended up coming back to bite him. Otherwise, we might have seen something like Dothy Voidwalker cast Fury this turn. But playing Ragavan and hitting Bowmaster is still a little bit too late at this point with yeah. two creatures coming across. That Wicked Roll token almost assuredly means that the last point will be trivial. Yeah, so it, I, I believe that Dothy Voidwalker does not stop the damage from the wicked token i can't remember right, right it does yeah. not just it, it goes to the graveyard as a token but yeah that that was you know a pretty good game one from jesse's side and going into the post board games a lot's going to change with these four ley line of the voids coming in from dingo's side and I, I don't know if jesse has four i think she has some number maybe three but that seems like the the card to look out for in this mirror match yeah, I, I agree. So Jesse, you know, does have the white splash for Celestial Purge, which is pretty dang good card against a red black deck. Um, honestly, not not too different from a Terminate, except for the fact that you can remove your opponent's uh, Leyline of the Voids and you know stop you know any scam cards from from saving opposing creatures. Just a small edge. What do you think of Dingo's plan of boarding out all four Thoughtseize? I see Jesse's keeping all of her discard, and I believe, and Dingo elected to get rid of all of them. So I, I'm someone that I think I really like Thoughtseize on the play in the mirror because this is going to allow you to like dis disrupt their possible butt draw, stopping them from scamming you with Grief turn one. On the draw, I think I'm a little bit less inclined to have too many Thoughtseize in my deck. I think that, uh, you know, especially if they just have a really proactive start, you're left with this this card that doesn't impact the board and doesn't help you stabilize. Um, I, I know that Dingo is very much like old school philosophy of like just just board out your discard spells in, in this matchup. I'm curious if you have any interesting thoughts on the Thoughtseize dynamic. I think the cards are so powerful that getting rid of Thoughtseize is less appealing to me when I'm playing this matchup. But the main incentive I see is that Leyline of the Void means the games are a lot lower resource. So I would point to that specific card as a reason why the Thoughtseizes get a lot worse when each player has a lot of copies of this. And that affects the valid the the value of the not dead after alls and so that sort of means that you know along with the thoughtsies dingo took out a few copies of not dead after all and jesse kept thoughtseizes and kept not dead after alls and is drawn uh you know the the turn one grief that we've talked about is so strong in this matchup yeah basically so strong in every matchup it, you know the, the chat seems to be really, really excited every single time someone casts Grief. The whole time I've just seen people spamming Grief, 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 Grief at the chat. Uh, right, and, and they want more, exactly. Yeah, and I, I'm glad that the chat's getting what they want here. So another spot where Dingo elects not to go for a Bowmaster line. Maybe this is something that he's had an experience with in the mirror going badly, and he's like, I want to save my Bowmaster. I, I sort of think that, you know, I personally would be trying to play as defensively as possible when I have Fable in this spot. So I think I would have liked to see the Bowmaster come down, try to kill the Grief. But either way, Jesse's Bowmaster is going to mean that's not a real possibility here. Yeah, I, I agree. Like the, the upside here of waiting on the Bowmaster doesn't really seem worth it where, you know, you, you have your Orc army left. That's that's the upside of kind of playing around the 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 Bowmaster here. But it but you're, you're, you're much, much more behind on board than you would be if you got to make the trade favorably. And, you know, the, the upside here is just having a one, one army because your bowmaster is getting answered by their bowmaster. Anyways, if you're casting, this was a huge draw step for Jesse, by the way, 
And drawing that Thoughtseize was probably the second best thing you could draw uh, besides drawing a land for the Fable. But making sure that you're the one who has a Fable and getting rid of their Fable is huge. But Shieldred. So now if Jesse draws a land, it's huge. But again... <laughs> like the second best thing she could have drawn here. That's really funny. The second best thing. And other Thoughtseize for Shieldred. And, and it's funny because from Jesse's point of view, there's not a lot of cards that you could Thoughtseize here. So I might even see her not cast it and save it to discard to Fable. It's not unreasonable to do that in this situation. Yeah, I absolutely agree. There's like the most likely card that Dingo could have in his hand is just a, a scam spell. Or land, right? Yeah, or Easily land, or, or fury, fury, grief. You know, I, I think I think the possibility of fury specifically, like you know, any four drop, but your know, shoulders, you know, just you know, post sideboard a little bit harder to think about. Um, makes you want to cast the thoughts he's there. But Croxa normally would be one of the best cards you could draw here versus Lay on the Void. Not really a thing. This is the strength that we see, and and Jesse's just decided. Okay, I'm gonna play Bowmaster. I'm gonna beat you down. Make you discard my Fable. And you have to draw something good really quickly. Yeah, I agree. I, th I think it's really interesting how we were talking about the Thoughtsies dynamic. And, you know, it's Dingo wanted to be no Thoughtsies in the matchup. Jesse is keeping them in, and the Thoughtsies is ended up being super impactful. I understand that they're super, they're, they can be very swingy, but, it, you know, you can pitch them to Fable, you can pitch them to Grief. I, I think. I, I went in thinking I would only keep them in on the play in the mirror. I think if I play the mirror anytime soon, I'll probably just keep them all in. Yeah, this was a big turn to try to draw something like a Fury to get back in the game. But without drawing anything here, the advantage bar suddenly swings extremely favorably in Jesse's direction because there's not a lot of draws that Dingo has here that can answer two things. Otherwise, going to two here is, is a huge issue. There's Bowmaster, there's Fury, and that's it. Yeah, I think so. Even a shielded is not going to buy enough time here. And Grief isn't going to do it either. So we're going to see Jesse take this down 2-0 in, in two quick games.